The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back it was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. To the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. And it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. But because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth. And every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. On this most holy night, the church recognizes her own death. A dying to self and the rising into eternal salvation in him a dying to sin and death and resurrection with him toward our ultimate end into a relationship of love and life with God where sin and death have no meaning. This miracle of God's merciful love cannot be accomplished on our own. Only when we are crucified with Christ, only when our sins and our sufferings are united with his. Only when we die to our old selves and are buried with him can we hope to share in the infinite joy of his resurrection. (coughs) This is the gift given by God to those who are baptized. The gift that is also a lifelong challenge to make God's merciful love come alive in our minds and our hearts, to challenge ourselves every day to live out our baptismal call to holiness by making Jesus Christ the single most important priority in our lives. Thus, the shift from Good Friday to Easter must be two things at once. Joy at the most wonderful gift of God's grace, and determination to keep the promises made at our baptism. This is why Holy Mother Church, in her limitless wisdom, decrees that on this night, 
we are to renew our baptismal promises as a reminder of our commitment to be living witnesses to and perfect examples of the goodness, truth, and beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. On this most holy night, we joyfully receive our brother Stephen into the fullness of the faith. Now I have to tell you, he's one of my students for RCIA, and Stephen is often not a man of many words. But when he does speak, he asks excellent questions. And to me, that tells me that is a person who's thinking. Huh? They're not just accepting everything that I'm saying about the faith. They're thinking, and they're asking good questions. Huh? Beautiful. In the sacrament of confirmation, a sacrament that is an integral part of the initiation into the Christian faith, not merely a rite of passage or a rebaptism or a mature decision to be Catholic. Stephen will become more like Christ and be open to a deeper presence and fullness of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will help make him a strong and perfect Christian, a soldier of Jesus Christ. Being sealed with the gift of the Spirit reminds all of us that we are the property of Christ and the temples of his word. In the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, Stephen will unite his body and soul with the Lord's. By joining himself to the resurrected Christ, he will become a more faithful witness to the truth by his words, his deeds and actions, and yes, even with his very life. The Eucharist will strengthen and deepen his faith and teach him to have complete trust and confidence in God's holy will. The resurrection gift of the Lord's body and blood challenges all of us to be examples of Christ to others. The Eucharist opens our hearts, making us more aware of Jesus' real presence in our lives and in the lives of every human person. In becoming one flesh with the risen Lord, we have the courage to say yes to God's invitation to new life in him. And with great joy and firm hearts, respond out of a faith, a hope, and the life-giving love that conquers sin and fear, that conquers the darkness of death, and that gives us the courage to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You know, on this particular night, we should pray in a special way for atheists who don't believe in God. Think about it. At the end of their life, there's death, and then there's nothing. Think about it like this. They, they, they like to use science and equations, huh? Let's use an equation right now. Close your eyes for a second. I want you to think about the time in your life where you experience tremendous joy. <laughs> now think of a time in your life where you experience tremendous pain. Maybe when grandma died. Or maybe you lost a child. Think about a time where you were very curious. Think about a time where you had complete trust in God that you could not call on anyone else except the Lord. Think of all the people in your life that you love. Now multiply that times zero. That's the life that the atheists say we have. But we know, we know for a fact that Jesus Christ is alive. That Jesus Christ is God. That Jesus Christ alone brings salvation. That Jesus Christ alone is the way to eternal life. And we, I am, I am willing, and so is Stephen, to bet his life on it. 
My brothers and sisters in Christ, what is the Lord saying to us this night? He is telling us we no longer have to fear, for there is nothing we can ever do. There is no sin too great. There is no hurt too deep that cannot be forgiven by the power of the resurrection. He is saying to us, I am Christ. Come, all you nations, receive forgiveness for the sins that defile you. I am your forgiveness. I am the Passover that brings salvation. I am the lamb that was sacrificed for you. I am your ransom, your life, your resurrection, your light. I am your salvation and your king. I will bring you to the heights of heaven. With my own right hand, I will raise you up. And I will draw you into my heart where you will live in the presence of God forever. May the joy and peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen.